Relays are available in different shapes and sizes. These are electromechanical relays, while this one is the SSR or solid state relay. So let's first start with the electromechanical relays and learn how to control these relays with and without using the Arduino. In the end, we will also learn what is a solid state relay and how to use it to control high ampere loads. Without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this video can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. These are four different types of relays, different in shapes, sizes and pins configuration. It really doesn't matter which type of the electromechanical relay you are using. The working principle is exactly the same. All you need is to connect the desired voltage with the relay coil contacts, which can be 5 volt to 48 volts. And this is normally printed on the relay. The type of relays I'm using can be operated using 12 volt DC and 24 volt DC. When you connect the voltage with the relay coil pins, you will hear the duck sound. To control these relays automatically using an Arduino board or ESP8266 or ESP32 or any other controller board, you will need to make a driver circuit. For the best understanding, I will make one driver circuit which can be used to control all these relays. Let's discuss each relay in detail. This is the 12 volt SPDD single pole and double throw type relay. Normally I use these types of relays for controlling AC loads. Relay specs are printed on the top. 12 volt DC means that this relay can be controlled using 12 volts. This is the voltage used to energize the relay coil. This voltage remains completely isolated from the voltage connected with the common and normally closed or normally open contacts of the relay. At 250 volt AC, it can handle AC load current up to 7 amps. 10 ampere AC loads at 125 volt AC and 12 ampere AC load at 120 volt AC. The pin configuration of these types of relays are exactly the same even if you are using a 5 volt relay. The middle leg is the common contact. These are the coil contacts. This is the normally closed contact and this is the normally open contact. We normally connect the AC or DC loads with the relay common and normally open contact. The relay coil has no polarity so it really doesn't matter which side of the coil you connect with the 12 volt DC and which side you connect with the ground. To control this relay automatically we will need to make the driver circuit. With the help of the driver circuit, then we can control the 12 volt relay using 3.3 volt and 5 volt compatible controller boards like for example ESP8266 and ESP32 which are 3.3 volt and Arduino boards are 5 volt. For the relay driver designing, you should know how much current is needed to energize the relay coil. For this, you will need to find the coil resistance using a digital multimeter. As you can see, the coil resistance is 405 ohms. Now using the formula V equals IR, we can find the current in milliamps needed to energize the relay coil. To energize the relay coil, you will need 29 milliamps. Now you can use any general purpose NPN or PNP type transistor whose collector current is greater than the relay coil current. My choice is 2N2222 NPN transistor because if you check the data sheet you will find that this NPN transistor is capable of handling the current up to 800 milliamps. Moreover, the 2N2222 NPN transistor is cheap and it's just like a cockroach available everywhere. This is the relay driver circuit. One side of the relay coil is connected with the 12 volts while the other side of the relay coil is connected with the collector of the 2N2222 NPN transistor. The emitter of the transistor is connected with the ground. 
the base of the transistor is connected with a 10 kilo ohm resistor which is then connected with any IO pin of the controller. A diode is connected across the two coil pins of the relay. This diode is used against the big EMF protection. AC or DC load is connected between the common and normally open contacts. As you can see, a neutral wire is connected directly with the load, while the live wire is connected with the load through a relay. So by turning on and turning off the relay, the connected AC or DC load can be turned on and turned off. As I said earlier, I'll be using the same driver circuit for controlling all the relays. To make things easier for you, I soldered the 2N222 transistor, 10K resistor and a terminal block. Connect the resistor with pin 13 of the Arduino and also the ground of the 12 volt power supply with the ground pin of the Arduino. Connect the two coil pins of the relay with the terminal block. Finally, I connected the AC load, in my case a light bulb. Now we will need to write a program to automatically turn on and turn off this bulb. This is a very basic program to control the relay connected with pin 13 of the Arduino Uno. I will be using the same program for controlling all the relays. I have already uploaded this program. Let's watch the 12 volt SPDT type relay in action. This is an SPDT 12 volt 100 ampere power relay. This is the bigger version of the small 12 volt relay. This relay has a total of 5 contacts. These are the coil contacts. We will connect 12 volt DC to energize the relay coil. This is the common contact. This is the normally closed and this one is the normally open contact. To operate this relay, you need 12 volts. As the relay coil has no polarity, so it really doesn't matter which side of the relay coil is connected with the ground or 12 volts. To operate this relay automatically, we will need a driver circuit. First, we find the relay coil resistance using a digital multimeter. As you can see, the relay coil resistance is 54.2 ohms. Now, using formula V equals IR, we can find the current needed to energize the relay coil. So we need at least 221 milliamps to energize the relay coil. As you know, 2 and 222 NPN transistor can handle current up to 800 milliamps. So we can use the same driver circuit for this relay as well and connected the relay coil contacts with the terminal block. This time instead of using the Arduino Uno, I decided to use the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module to control this power relay using the Blink application and the Android cell phone application designed in Android Studio. The Android app, ESP32 code and Blink application designing is explained in another video. I will provide a link in the description. This is the HKE 12V DC DPDT double pole and double throw type relay. This DPDT type relay can be used to control AC loads up to 5 amps. As this is the DPDT type relay, so this relay can be used to control two AC loads. This relay has a total of 8 pins. The pins configuration diagram is given at the top. The first two pins are the coil pins. These two pins are the normally closed. These two are the common, while these two are the normally open contacts. To control this relay automatically, you will need the driver circuit. I started off by measuring the coil resistance and then using the formula V equals IR, I calculated the current needed to energize the relay coil, which is 44 milliamps. This relay can also be controlled using the same driver circuit. I connected the relay coil contacts with the block terminal and one AC load with the common and normally open contacts. 
This is how the final connections look. I will be using the same Arduino code. Currently, I am controlling only one load. If you want, you can connect another load as well. This is the Omron 24V DC DPDT type relay. This is the bigger version of the HKE 12V DC DPDT type relay. The voltage and current specs are clearly printed. This type of relay is normally used with PLCs. But with the help of a driver circuit, it can be controlled using different voltages. The Omron 24V DC DPDT type relay also comes with a base socket. The relay nicely sits in and there is no need of soldering. The relay contacts configuration diagram is given on the top and if you look closely, you will also find that the relay base socket also has the numbers. So as per the relay contacts configuration diagram, 7 and 8 are the relay coil contacts. 5 and 6 are the common contacts. 3 and 4 are the normally open contacts and 1 and 2 are the normally closed contacts. I started off by measuring the coil resistance and then using the formula V equals IR, I calculated the current needed to energize the relay coil which is 30 at milliamps. This relay can also be controlled using the same driver circuit but this time we will connect 24 volt DC. AC load is connected with the relay 5 and 3 contacts. 5 is the common contact while contact number 3 is the normally open contact. Currently I have connected a single load. If you want you can connect another AC or DC load with the other common and normally open or normally closed contacts. This is the Fodec SSR solid state relay capable of handling the AC load current up to 25 ampere. It has no moving parts so you won't hear any sound when you turn on and turn off this solid state relay. The solid state relay has a total of 4 contacts. AC loads are connected with the contacts 1 and 2. The AC voltage range is 24 to 380 volt AC. The input contacts 3 and 4 are used to turn on and turn off the relay. The input voltage range is from 3 to 32 volt DC. So you can use any voltage from 3 to 32 volt DC to turn on this relay. Contact 3 is the positive while contact 4 is the ground. Let's control this relay using the driver circuit. The 12 volt DC from the driver circuit is connected with the plus contact of the solid state relay and you don't have to be worried as it accepts a wide range of input voltages from 3 to 32 volt DC. So this solid state relay can be safely operated using 12 volt DC. Connect the ground contact of the solid state relay with the ground of the driver circuit. The two wires of the AC load are connected with the contacts 1 and 2. This is the basic connection diagram of controlling the solid state relay using a driver circuit. We will use the same Arduino code to control this relay. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.